this entitled mom doesn't like her son's new girlfriend because of her religion. But what she does next on social media will leave you gobsmacked. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. I am a 14 male, and this happened about two years ago. Here's some background knowledge. So I wanted to make a little extra money because I was into stocks, and I wanted to make money for my future, invest in stocks, buy a car that would last me past high school, etc. I wanted to start making money by dog walking. I started making a poster that showed why I wanted to make money, and I had a dog. He was a medium dog, but I was a relatively strong person and could handle most sizes of dogs. So I started printing about 30 copies of posters and started putting them on an electrical post every 200 feet or so. I took about an hour considering I didn't bike. I just followed my daily routine for the next few days, waiting to get a call from someone to ask about my dog walking. A few days after I put up the posters, I took my dog on a long walk. So I was walking and just after about 30 minutes of walking from my house, there were no posters. I swear I thought I put them up. I continued my walk and found less dog posters around this area. After about an hour walk, I got home and I looked where I mapped out where I would put the posters. There were supposed to be posters there. I called my friend who lives near there and asked him to watch the posters and tell me if there was someone taking them down and when. He said sure. Later that day, he called me back asking where the posters were. Oops, I forgot to mention that I would be putting them up early tomorrow before school. This was at around 10 p.m. and my parents wouldn't let me put them up when I was 12 even if I was almost 13. Okay, we'll see you then I guess. See you. Wait, I forgot to say that there was someone, EM, standing near one of those posts for about 20 minutes. Oh, and I've seen her before. I think she lives near me. Okay, well that's random. Bye, see ya. The next day I put up the posters and walked to school with my friend because I was already over there. It is a normal day at school. I tell my friends about it and my friend exaggerates about the person standing by the post doing nothing. After about 10 minutes, after I get home, I get a call from my friend, he lives farther from school, saying the posters have been taken down again. I am annoyed at this point, so I bike over to his house and put one poster right across from his window. We head in and start playing Minecraft. I'm not paying much attention as I'm watching the poster. There is someone maybe in their mid 40s approaching the poster, I tell my friend, and we wait until they are in arm's reach of the poster. They might just be looking at it. I think that's the person that was standing at the poster earlier. Okay, let's go over to them. We approach the EM as she turns back and gives us the eye. My friend and I quickly act like we're just taking a walk. Yep, it's the person that was standing at the post earlier. Okay, we should approach her. I'll do the talking. As we approach her, she turns again, and this time, the poster is in her hand with a firm grip. Hello, are you interested in that? EM huffs and turns again. She was clearly in a bad mood. I say it again, but a little different. Are you interested in that? I put up those posters, and I can walk your dog if you're interested. I don't want you to walk a single dog. I didn't know what she meant by that. She starts to rip off half the poster with the other half stuck on. What are you doing? Well, since my son's going to start walking his dog soon, he wanted to make some money, so I wanted to be perfect for him. Well, there is enough space for both of us. No! Well, even so, you can't take down my posters. I'm also trying to make money. Well, that doesn't matter. If your parents can afford to live in this neighborhood, then you are fine, she complains. Then I remember this very distinctively when she said, Anyways, you're too fat and tall to walk a dog. You couldn't walk a puppy. Ha! I was really annoyed at this point. At the time, I got mad really easily. I ranted, Well, even if my parents can afford to live here, you don't know anything about me, and you assume that I'm fat. You are a slob and a terrible parent. I bet that you've been spoiled your whole life. I know I contradicted myself multiple times in that sentence, but I was mad. My parents could afford to live in the neighborhood. We live in the Bay Area, which generally costs more places than most, but my family didn't have a nice house, we just lived in a nice neighborhood, and I was not fat. I am really tall, and I have a bit of a large stomach, and it sticks out a bit, but I don't have an eating problem, I'm just built this way. I'm going to keep ripping your posters off so that my 9 year old can walk dogs. Lady stop, my friend spent a lot of time doing this, 
And if he wants to make money, he can. You're doing a bad thing. My friend was very logical. But we're 12, so we look like complete idiots. At this point, friend's mum came outside and yelled from across the street. Stop being a BEM and stop harassing my son and his friend. His mum was more like me, but an adult. EM, please stop. The reason I want to make money is to invest in my future. Shut the heck up. You just want to spend it on food and we all know that. I was done with her craziness. I went back inside with my friend and we continued to play Minecraft. I would look back over the argument at hand. From the looks of it, it seems like friend's mom was just being mean at this point, not even trying to fix the problem. I was fine with that. His mom let me stay for dinner and turns out she said some pretty funny things to this woman. After dinner, I took my backpack and was going to go home when I realized I brought an extra poster. My friend and I put up the poster and giggled. I didn't care much about this because it was a great story to tell people, even if I was mad. This is what I heard about the mum's conversation was pretty much like. FM equals friend's mum. FM said that her parenting skills were the same as an animal who abandons her child at birth. EM just kept ranting about how the whole world is crazy and no one can tell when someone is trying to be nice and how we were evil to even suggest that I was equal to her son. I figured get most stuff that happened then, but I hope that me trying to fill in what I forget was just a hair away from being the same as what actually happened. But I showed my friend what I wrote and he said that it was pretty much what actually happened. But he said that we were playing Roblox, not Minecraft. I think he was just messing with me though. I don't like Roblox, and I don't think I ever did. This woman clearly needs some help, or just someone to snap her back into a realistic state. I feel bad for her that she acts like that on a regular basis, but at the same time, it's not okay whatsoever, and whatever happened to her, she deserved. My friend says he doesn't see her much anymore, just on holidays. I think she probably moved away and has friends or family that they visit during the holidays. I made about $600 before I stopped. I spent about 150 towards stocks, 50 towards money for going downtown with friends, and about $400 went towards a new graphics card for my failing one. But I bought the graphics card about five months ago. Good on that kid for actually trying to be more responsible than an entitled parent. Not only did he have a goal to work hard to save up money, but he planned to portion some of it into investing, which is the best thing you can do when you're young because of compounding interest. I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice, but generally speaking, if you invest in things like stocks early on in life, it's going to have a much bigger payout than even 10 years later. What's the bet that the entitled parent only wanted her kid to be the only one who was the dog walker there because she will probably be the one who takes the money from the kid? Of course, that's just speculation, but based on past experiences with entitled parents, that's generally the case. My egg donor never liked my girlfriend, Eva. We've known each other for six years, two and a half of which we're dating. However, things changed dramatically towards the worse when we started plotting moving in together in late 2019. It's not like my mother hates Eva for her personality. She's the most amazing person in that matter. My mother hates her because she's a bigoted Islamophobe and xenophobe. Eva is daughter of a Muslim immigrant, though Eva herself is atheist and is of descent of three foreign countries. This makes her an immigrant filth in my mother's eyes. This, however, is not the only reason. Not only she has problems with Eva's family background, but as well with how she looks. There's something absolutely gorgeous about Eva. She has vitiligo literally everywhere and a huge scar. In my mother's eyes, however, this makes her a disgraceful freak of nature that shouldn't breed. It broke my heart when I first heard her say it, and it was one of the reasons why I wanted to get away from her mother, of course. Anyway, after numerous attempts at sabotaging us moving in together, all being in vain and backfiring, she has found another way, social media. My mother knew of Eva's social media, however, she never paid attention to it until yesterday. Operation Public Insult was all set up to begin. I was with my father to help him out with some farm work. On the way back home, Eva texted me that I have to go get back. Back home, I found Eva crying with her phone on the table. When I asked her what happened, she told me to take a look and behold. My mother apparently made a comment on the most recent photo, then from a few hours ago, saying something like, I don't understand how someone can look so disgusting and dare to show off like a slut on the internet. Truly a disgusting
interesting person and behavior. Note, it was a photo of Eva in a short sleeve t-shirt and shorts, showing Eva's skin condition and scar. Our friends have been quick to stand up for Eva and call my mother similar terms regarding her behavior towards Eva. Then I looked through other photos. All of these somewhat recent ones had some nasty comment from my mother. Anyway, ton of comforting and a tub of ice cream later, I have texted my mother that this time she crossed the line by too freaking far for me even considering to ever forgive her such a behavior. There's no way I want her anywhere near our home ever again. And that no matter what she says, I will always choose Eva over her. She then called me and went on a full rant about how disrespectful I am, how she gave birth to me, how I will break up with her anyway, how she's just leeching off me, and how there are better looking girls out there. Another note, as said, we've been together two and a half years. Two and a half years we started dating when we were 15. We're both 18 now. The time when relationships last a few months, and Eva has no particular reason to leech off me, and she's from richer family than I am. And for me, there's no better looking girls. I just responded, I'll remind you when you'll demand to see grandkids, grandkids whose mother is the most beautiful person in the world, and maternal grandmother is Muslim, and unlike you, both are great people, and ended the call. I ignored the tens of messages basically saying the same thing I already wrote. Today, Eva and I both made new accounts, made them private, deleted the old ones, and let everyone know other than my mother. Tomorrow we're changing our phone numbers as well, and again, giving the new ones to everyone, excluding my mother, and hoping that my family members respect our wishes to never let my mother know our new numbers and social media. Media. Sure, it's an inconvenience. However, that's the least of my worries, as now Eva's family knows how my mother sees Eva and her mother. So I was worried that this time my mother's sabotage would be successful. However, I got a call from Eva's mother a few hours ago. She asked me if my mother is serious, to which I anxiously replied, unfortunately, yes. Then she asked me how I see Eva, if I truly love her. My response was that I love her more than anything and anyone else, that Eva is the most most beautiful and amazing person ever. She then asked me if I have any particular problems with her being Muslim and a foreigner. To which I said no, that I actually find it interesting in a non-offensive way. She then talked to Eva who confirmed everything. Thankfully, Eva's mother is very understanding and hasn't forbidden us two from living together. Still, I don't think that the incident of yesterday made me any good in Eva's family's eyes. Apart from being beyond cruel, what does she think she's going to achieve by leaving mean comments like that publicly on social media? Yes, you'll make her feel bad, but everybody online, all your friends and family will know what kind of person you are. A very terrible one. That's kind of the point of social media is you see what other people are like, which is why there's so much fakeness that happens on social media as well. Which, you know, that's its own issue for its own day. But imagine bumping into an old friend and it's like, oh hey Patricia, how are you? And she's like, good. Just like, I don't want to talk to you, you're a really mean person. I taught martial arts several years ago, and I've seen my fair share of entitled parents. However, this lady and her kids are forever burned into my brain. I taught at a regular studio, but on the side to market the studio, I would run a six-week after-school parks and rec program. In my program, I taught forms. There would be a couple days of sparring and board-breaking basics. I think some parents and kids come in thinking they're going to be these MMA cage fighters. But I digress. Looking back, I think the most entitled parents were the ones that put their kids in that program. I was starting a new session, and this woman, EM, brought her two sons, six-ish and twelve-ish years old, to the class. I greet them. Hey, I'm Courtney. Welcome to Parks and Rec class. What are your names? Where is the instructor? I am. I teach over at X Martial Arts Studio on Y Street. I was expecting a man. We really want a man to teach our sons. Which she turns to her kids and tells them, that I fight like a girl. While this is very annoying, I thought maybe the kids would be okay or maybe she was just brash. I was wrong. The 12 year old on day one wanted to spar me. I told him that isn't what we're going to do and that we would spar later in the class session once everyone learns the basics. I invited EM to stay to watch the classes so I could ensure that I was a capable and very qualified instructor, thinking this would put her mind at ease. For the next six weeks, I had to deal with the 
fighting like a girl or where is the male instructor comments. I ensured that while we do have male instructors, I am the only one that runs this program and at our studio, there is a teaching rotation so everyone gets an opportunity to teach. However, I am the one that oversees the other instructors. Oddly enough, these folks signed up at our studio. On their first day, EM, two sons and an older sister walk in. I greet them like I would any student and ask for information to set up accounts. I'm getting things squared away and the sister, who was maybe my age, I was in my early 20s, made the comment I've heard time and time again. I bet you hit like a girl. At this time, I was very much over the comments. I get it the first couple of times, but it gets old quickly. So I said back to her, I have a waiver that you can sign if you'd like and we can spar. She declined and laughed it off saying she was joking. Fine. EM goes on and on about male instructors, how her husband only wants her kids to be taught by men. Her youngest son was the sweetest, kindest kid. I really, really enjoyed teaching him and I think that he would have gone far if they would have stayed with the studio. However, the 12 year old was an EK and had this chip on his shoulder thinking he was owed the world. I tried to empathize. I have seen kids from all backgrounds and walks of life, but this kid made it difficult. Over the next several weeks, I would only pair EK, 12, with male opponents because I noticed that when he would fight with the girls, he would be much more aggressive. He started to get more and more warnings and it was just a bad time. EM advised that if I were a male instructor, this wouldn't be happening. I told her that that isn't the case. To be honest, I wanted to say that I think there was a lot of discipline issues at home. Finally, tournament time rolls around. EM approaches me and asks about trophies. At our tournaments, we just have gold, silver, bronze medals. That's it. She started to demand that we start giving trophies. I told her that while some studios and larger tournaments do have trophies, we just don't provide them at this time. EM demands that we present her kids with trophies that she planned on buying for them. I told her that I'm absolutely not going to do that. She told me I was crushing her kids' hearts. Eventually, I just tell her, Ma'am, for the last time, I'm not presenting the kids with a trophy. It isn't fair to others who have worked just as hard. If you want to give them some trophies on your own time outside of this tournament, you can do that. EM and co roll up to the tournament. EK12 loses. She brought those trophies with her, left us a bad Yelp review and dipped from the studio. We never saw them again. Don't know what happened to them. I hope they found a sole male instructor and I hope the younger son kept up with it and I hope that he hasn't adapted the same attitude that his parents and older brother have. I don't teach anymore, but I hope that my kids get into it. Lots of good memories, but man, some parents, am I right? I guess that's what's so tricky being the minority gender in what's usually dominated by the other gender. Whether it's a female going into a male-dominated martial arts field or a male going to a female-dominated field like nursing, there's always going to be stereotypes that people make about that field. Are men generally stronger than women? Yeah, of course. There's this biological thing called testosterone which kinda helps them with that. Does that mean that there aren't women out there that are really tough and can probably kick your butt? Nope, there definitely are. So if you're a minority in whatever it is and you have to go up against stereotypes, good on you because it's always hard. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.